Remember, a Hallmark card when you carry enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you Edward Arnold in Thunder Shower on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark brings you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories and presents as your host one of the most distinguished actors of the American theater, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Lionel Barrymore. You know, the day of many shortages seems to be pretty well past. Nowadays, we're turning out plenty of just about everything we need and want, except for one special commodity. The supply has never caught up with our demand for good, light-hearted stories of everyday America. That's why we of Hallmark Playhouse feel lucky to be able to bring you tonight our adaptation of Bellamy Partridge's novel called Thunder Shower. It's a story as American as ice cream, <laughs> and just about as hard to resist. <clears throat> and come to think of it, that's also a pretty good description of the man who's to be our guest star this evening, my old friend Edward Arnold. And now, here's Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cards. One of the particular joys of Christmas is sending and receiving Christmas cards. While the pleasure Christmas cards bring can never be measured, isn't it good to know that Hallmark Cards are priced the same this year as they were last year, and the year before, and the year before that? And that the quality of Hallmark Cards has constantly improved throughout the years. Yes, today, just as for many Christmas seasons, that hallmark on the back of your card is looked for and welcomed. It tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor picture Plymouth Adventure, starring Spencer Tracy, Gene Tierney, Van Johnson, and Leo Genn. And now here is the first act of Thunder Shower, starring Edward Arnold. <laughs> Just the right size, Simpson Falls. Big enough to be the county seat and small enough so a man can know just about everybody in it. And just about everybody does know Jim Stebbins. Every summer's evening along about this time, you can see Jim swinging up the elm-shaded street toward his house. He reaches that picket gate, which he's still meaning to repaint sometimes, he, he always gives out of the signal. <laughs> then there's another whistle from the front veranda. That'd be Caroline or maybe Jim's daughter, Harriet. But this evening, this particular evening, Jim doesn't get an answer. Caroline? Harriet? Uh, hello, Mr. Stebbins. Oh, well, well, Erskine Roberts, when did you get back into town? Just a few minutes ago, sir. I see. And your first stop was our front porch, huh? Eh? Where's Harriet? Here in the swing, Father. Oh, young lady, didn't you hear me whistle? Oh, oh, was that you? <laughs> Erskine and I were so engrossed. Uh, that is, uh, in talking. Oh, yes, of course, in talking, yes. Uh, Erskine just graduated from college, and now he's home to stay. Isn't that wonderful, Father? Well, isn't it? Hmm? Well, there's something odd about this swing. Odd? Hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, Erskine, would you see if Mother would like... Oh, I know. I, I, it's a new canvas. It's been recovered. Now, Dad. No, by jinx, it's more than that. It's a brand new swing. Jim? Yes, oh, Jim. Yes, Caroline? May I see you, dear? Right away, please. Yes, excuse me, Erskine. Yes, sir. Yes, Caroline? Darling. Uh, 
Hmm? You mustn't embarrass Harriet. Embarrass? Huh? You mean I'm not supposed to notice the new swing that I've got to pay for somehow? Shh, not so loud. What was the matter with the old swing? Have we suddenly gotten too shabby for, for love's young dream? Darling, please, we can talk about it later. That's what I keep telling my creditors, but one of these days... One of these days you'll be rich, dear. Mm. Why, you could be right today if you'd make all your clients pay what they owe you. If you'd just stop doing free work. An attorney can't turn away people that are in trouble, my dear. At least I can't. Miss Devon. Oh, no. Oh, dear. It's Red Beecham again. Mm. Borrowing neighbors. Well, whatever he wants, tell him we haven't got it. But you have... All my wife wants is the loan of a quarter pound of butter. Oh, good evening, Fred. Ah, I see you got a new swing on the porch, Jim. Uh-huh. Well, now that you're spending money again, how about me selling you that extra life insurance? No, huh? no, I'm not spending any money, Fred. The swing's on credit and probably going back. Oh, Jim. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that, Miss Devins. Not the way Jim's prospects are picked up today. My prospects? You heard about Judge Robinson resigning, didn't you? Well, I don't see how that affects me. Jim, you mean to say you haven't had it all up? With Robinson out of the state Supreme Court, the governor's got to appoint another man. Oh, actually, Judge Meade, most likely. All right. When Meade leaves our county bench here, we'll have to elect another local judge. And uh, who's the best man we got? Jim. Yes, Jim, of course. Oh, no, 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 Caroline. You know I'm not a politician, and with me owing bills to half the town, I doubt I'd stand very high with the voters. That's just why they'll elect you, Jim, so you'll have the money to pay them all. <laughs> well, even if you're right, Fred, there's somebody else to consider. The father of the boy who's sitting out on the porch with Harriet. I guess we all know that Lehman Roberts and his bank run this county politically. All right. And don't you suppose old Lehman would like his son to marry the daughter of a judge? Oh, <laughs> I tell you, it's in the bag, Jim. I'll run home and get you that insurance application. Fred, I can't afford it. Well, maybe not today, but after the election. Well, we'll wait and see. Oh, too many men have said that before, Jim. Left their families unprotected. You know, there's no telling when your summons will come. Maybe the strain of the election and all the campaigning you'll be doing. <laughs> Fred, I'm not running for office so I can buy your life insurance policy and drop dead, you know. Caroline, hurry up and give him that quarter pound of butter, will you? A half a pound, Miss Devon. A half a pound? Fred, you said a quarter of a pound. Huh? Oh, but that was before I was your campaign manager. Now I'm on your payroll. <laughs> Come in, Miss Carter. Come in. Uh, Miss Carter, I'm looking for that file on the Whitcomb case. I think your secretary stepped out to lunch, Mr. Oh, Stevens. Oh, well, well, Erskine, this is a surprise. Um, I've uh, come for some advice, Mr. Stebbins. Huh? Harriet thought I ought to because you know about these things. Oh, I see. Well, it depends on what things. Uh, Mr. Stebbins, you know why my father sent me away to college. Yes, yeah, so you could go into the bank with him. And now I don't want to. I want to be an engineer. I, I know I'd be a good one. All I need is another year or two at a technical school. Oh, I see. And your father is against it. I've been afraid to tell him, sir. He's so set on the idea of my being in the bank. And I guess you know what his temper is like. I certainly do. But just the same, son, you've got to talk it out with him. But if he still says no... Oh, he will if you don't show more spunk, my boy. Lehman is stubborn. But I think he's intelligent enough to want his son to be happy in his career. I hope I can make him see it that way, but if he doesn't... Then you've got to stand on your own two feet. Go to your technical school, even if you have to work your way through it. That's what I've been wondering about, sir. What would you think about Harriet and me? I might not have any money. <laughs> All I can say to that is, come on in, boy, the hot water's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. I was afraid that maybe when you got to be judge, you might want somebody else for your son-in-law. When I get to be judge? I haven't told anybody about that. Well, you haven't? Hmm. I just saw Fred Beecham on Main Street. He was giving away handbills about you. Oh. Oh, great thunder. Hmm. Well, I guess that settles it. If I'm in the race, I might as well start running. You'll be elected, sir. Everybody knows you're the best man for it. Well, I hope your father shares that view. I've got to see him right today. When's the best time to talk to him? Right after the bank closes. Mm -hmm. I'll be seeing him at lunch, and I'll tell him to wait for you. Fine, that's good. I'll be there. Yeah, 
Yes, I've seen them, Jim. Fred Beecham came in here and scattered handbills all around the bank. Mm, then you know why I'm here, Lehman. If you come out for me, everything will be very simple. Will it? Mm -hmm. What if the governor doesn't promote Judge Meade to the Supreme Court? If he picks somebody else, there won't be any vacancy on the local bench. Well, that's true enough, but everything looks like Meade will get the appointment. Mm. What's the matter? Why the frown? A uh, guy here in Dean came in to see me during the lunch hour. He wants me to talk to the governor about putting him on the Supreme Court. Herondine? What everybody knows his record as district attorney, he's completely incompetent. Yeah, completely. Well, then, what did you tell him? Nothing. I was right in the middle of a little problem of my own. I'll be mighty thankful, Jim, that you've got a daughter instead of a son. Nowadays, a young man is just a young fool. <laughs> I don't know about that, Lee, but my girl Harriet is a pretty high idea of us, can you Yes, know? and that's something I've been meaning to take up with you, Jim. Those two are getting much too serious for my liking. Ah, love has got to be a serious thing. Ah, love. Puppy love. You might as well know it, Jim. I've got certain definite plans for my son, that's and they don't in trouble, Dad. They're too definite. Erskine? I stopped by to tell you that I've thought over what you said at lunch. I'm tired of threats. I'm tired of being bought with promises. So there's nothing left for me except to leave home. First, kid, this is a private matter between you and me. That's all right. Mr. Stebbins knows about it. What? And as he says, it's time for me to make a life of my own. He says. Now, Lee. So he says, does he? Now, look here, Jim. Now, now hold on, Lee. Hold on. The boy simply asked my advice. And I'm taking it. You're not... Don't expect me home for dinner, Dad, because I've got my bags packed outside and I'm not coming back. Erskine? Goodbye, Dad. <clears throat> well, I guess I'll be getting along, Lemon. This isn't exactly the time to talk politics. Maybe later. No. We'll settle it right now. You've been planning this a long time, haven't you? First you throw your girl at my son, and then now you... just a minute, Lee. Then you push him out of his own home so he won't have me to advise him, and you can run him and that girl to the nearest preacher. Now, Lee, You want to be judge, do you? I'll see that you can't even be elected dog catcher. I'm for Herndon, and what I say around this county goes. You know... I'm glad you, to hear you say that, Lehman, because now I realize that's just what's wrong around here. Too much goes on just because you say so. It's time the citizens did their own thinking and talking, and by thunder, I'm going to help them do it. Defeat me if you can. I don't care. I'm out to win something bigger for all of us. In just a moment, we will return to the second act of Thunder Shower, starring Edward Arnold. What does Christmas really mean to you? Holly wreaths and church bells and carolers in the snow? The thrill of watching a small child see his first Christmas tree? Or memories of other Christmases at home with your school friends gathered around the family piano? For all of us, Christmas has a different meaning. And that is why the makers of Hallmark Cards bring you so many different styles to choose from in the Hallmark Christmas Card Collection. And because your Christmas card becomes a bond of friendship that reaches out across the miles to let your friends know you're thinking of them, your choice of the card you have imprinted with your name is a very important choice. So why not see all the styles, all the beautiful designs in the Hallmark Christmas Card albums at the fine stores where Hallmark Cards are sold? you're sure to find that one ideal card. And by ordering now, you'll have plenty of time for leisurely addressing. Remember, the hallmark on the back of every card you mail will say, you cared enough to send the very best. Now back to Lionel Barrymore in the second act of Thunder Shower, starring Edward Arnold. <laughs> The heated feelings between Jim Stebbins and Lehman Roberts is just about equaled by Mother Nature herself. The night is hot and humid. On the front porch of the Stebbins house, 
The steady creaking of the swing blends with the night music of the crickets. Then there's the sudden flare of a match. Jim is lighting his pipe. Jim? Jim? Yes, dear, yes, yes. You haven't said a word for ages. Are you worried? Mm, no, it's just hot. <sighs> Usually we have a little breeze along about this hour. Mm, mm. Jim? Hmm? If there's something on your mind... You know what makes you think there is? Well, politics, maybe. No. Oh. Darling, I do hope you aren't running for judge just to please me. I don't want you to think that you have to earn a better living for me and Harriet. You do understand that, oh, don't you? Of course, my dear. By the way, uh, where did Harriet say they were going? Down to the lake. Mm-hmm. Erskine thought it would be a good night for canoeing. Oh, perfect for it. Mm-hmm. You know, that boy surprises me. How he ever got that job in Carter's garage with no experience at all. Mm, well, that's what he needs. If he's going to be an engineer, he's got to learn about machinery at first hand. I know, but for Mr. Carter to hire him... Well, the boy's got to earn his keep or go back to his father and surrender everything. <laughs> it seems to me that you have it awfully well thought out. Hmm? At least Erskine's side of it. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, Caroline, all right. I did ask Carter to hire him. And oh. We made a deal. I said I'd cancel Carter's bill for the legal work I did for him last year. Jim. <laughs> but for heaven's sake, don't tell Erskine, will you? Oh, even Harriet. Evening, everybody. Oh, hello, Fred. Hello. Uh, my wife was wondering, Miss Stebbins, if maybe we could borrow some ice cubes. Need some for iced tea and all. Well, I'll see if we've got some to spare, Mr. Beacham. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, Caroline, how about some iced tea for us, too? All right, Well, Jim. Jim, I hate to say this, but, um, I got to resign as your campaign manager. Oh, no? well, you never were officially my campaign manager, Fred. But why do you think you have to resign? Well, you haven't got a chance, Jim, now that old Lehman Roberts has come out against you. Oh, I'm not so sure of that. All my friends say they'll vote for me, and I've got plenty of them. That's what they tell you, sure. But old Lehman is telling them something different. Something a man don't like to hear. Like what, Fred? And they say... They say Lehman's talking of calling a few of his bank loans around town. He's saying the political situation is too risky. What? But that's... Why, that's almost blackmail. Sure it is. But, Jim, you can't buck Lehman's power. Besides controlling the town's money, he's a good friend of the governor. Sure as shooting Harron Dean will be appointed to the Supreme Court, Judge Meade will stay down here in the court you're after. Well, Fred, do whatever you like. But I'm staying in this fight to the finish. It's already finished, I tell you. Ah, oh, I sure hate to see a good family man like you lose everything. <laughs> well, hardly everything, Fred. Well, you never know, Jim. Times aren't so good around here. Folks have to pay off bank loans. They can't be paying fees to you. Well, most of them aren't paying me anyway. Well, it could go harder, you know. This hot spell keeps up and the farmers have a bad drought. Anything can start a panic. <laughs> Fred, the way you talk, I don't see how you ever sell a life insurance policy. <laughs> That's what does it, my contagious gloom. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it makes a man realize the worst is just around the corner. <laughs> well, I, I hope this is enough ice, Mr. Beecham. It's all we can spare. Oh, that's plenty, thanks. Hey, I, I better get it home before it melts. Oh, <laughs> good night, Fred. All right. Uh-oh. You hear that thunder? Probably have a cloud burst now and wash away half the town. <laughs> oh, that Fred, that Fred. Yes. <laughs> Look, Harriet come, Harriet's coming in the gate. What's she doing home so early? Uh, where's Erskine? Harriet? Is anything wrong? Harriet? Yes? What's happened? Where's Erskine? I don't know and I don't care. Oh, my dear, you haven't quarreled. If Erskine thinks so much of his father, I never want to see him again. Oh, oh. I think I know what's coming. All I said was that I didn't think it was fair for his father to call Dad a failure and say he'd be a bigger failure on the bench. Erskine said something back, and then, then it got worse, and I slapped him. Oh, I hate him. I hate him. Oh, Jim, this is dreadful. Yes, it is. And so are a lot of other things around here. I'm afraid they've all got to get worse before they can get better. A lot worse. <laughs> Good 
Gam. I say, Gam. Oh, good morning, Fred. I'll be with you as soon as I get this letter type. Oh, no, no, the heck with that, Jim. There's a run on Lehman's Bank. What? Are you joking? Am I? Go look out your window. First thing I saw was a big limousine roll up to the bank and two men get out with briefcases. Bank examiners, I say to myself. But next thing, people are storming into the bank. Oh, they're not now. Lehman's closed the front door. Everybody's milling around outside. Hey, listen to them. Yes, and if somebody doesn't step in, there's going to be a riot. Come on, Fred, come on. Jim, wait. You can't stop them, huh? Jim, don't be a fool. They'll turn on you. Get your money, all of you. But not this way. Lehman Roberts has always run a good, solid bank. And we want to keep it that way by all of us keeping our heads. I thought you was against Lehman. How much is he paying you for this? Now, wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. Most all of you are my friends. We grew up together. We helped build this town together. And now let's not turn against our hometown. That's exactly what you'll be doing if you if you use violence. You'll disgrace Simpson Falls before the whole state. You'll be telling the country that we use our muscles, but not our brains. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe he's right. Then right now, I'm advising you not to break the law. You've got power on your side, but not the right. Go back to your stores and homes and think it over. Right for Jim Stubbins! <laughs> Come on. Jim. Jim? Yes, Leland. Will you step into the bank a minute? Jim, the governor wants to meet you. The governor? Mr. Stebbins, I want to compliment you on your handling of that crowd. Your courage is all that prevented a dangerous riot. Oh, thank you, sir, but there's uh, something I don't quite understand. Where are the bank examiners? Bank examiners? Yes. So that's the crazy idea that started everybody running. How could any idiot mistake the governor and his secretary for bank examiners? Well, I don't know, but Fred Beecham told me that... Uh-uh. The truth of the matter, Mr. Stebbins, is that I merely happened to be passing through this section and stopped by to see Mr. Roberts about a certain political appointment. Uh, by the way, Lehman, after what I've just witnessed, I think there's a better man for that post than Guy Arendine. Well... Whatever, whatever you say, Governor. Mr. Stebbins, with your permission, I should like to appoint you Associate Justice of the State Supreme Court. Mm. Oh, whatever. Whatever you say, Governor. <clears throat> You know, I'm glad you bought this new swing. I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Well, it was really for Harriet and Erskine, you know. Mm-hmm, yeah. Now it seems they prefer the piano bench. They play a very nice duet together, don't they? Yes, yes. I guess they'll be doing it for a long, long time. It was just a lover's match. Yes, yeah, sure, that's all. Now, do you suppose Mr. Roberts will let Erskine be an engineer? Now. Oh, that's all said. I talked it out with Lehman this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, it's funny to see how agreeable he's gotten to my ideas. Well, after all, dear, his son is making a very good match. Mm -hmm. The daughter of a Supreme Court judge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, speaking of matches, my dear, you and I, Caroline, have struck it off wonderfully well ourselves. Why, <laughs> Jim? What's the matter? You made a joke. I did what? Yeah, but don't you see? Matches. Tracking it off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's more than a joke, my dear. It's the, it's the truth. Life has been rich and full for us because we've had each other. That's all that counts, Caroline. All that ever will. Oh, my darling. <sighs> You know, I think it's a little cooler than mine. Well, it's about time. 
Oh, what a summer. And for that matter, what a day. Mm, You know, it's been like that thunder shower this afternoon. First the heat and all the discomfort. Then the fury of the storm. And now it's all over, my dear. And all nature is beginning to smile again. Edward Arnold and Lionel Barrymore will return in a moment. Here in America, all of us have a particular love for Thanksgiving, for it's our own day, the one day of the year when we give thanks for the rich bounties of our land. If it's possible, we gather the family around us, and eventually the conversation turns to friends, and someone asks, how are Johnny and Sue, or have you heard from the Thompsons lately? Yes, friends are a part of Thanksgiving, too. And one wonderful way to make the day even more pleasant is to thank your friends for being our friends. It's such a gracious, easy thing to do if you make a point of sending Hallmark Thanksgiving Day cards. You'll choose styles for everyone you know at the fine stores which feature Hallmark cards. Sparkling new styles that are humorous or warm. Styles that bring back memories of your childhood. And you'll find special Hallmark cards for those relatives who can't be with you on Thanksgiving Day. Remember, when you send Thanksgiving cards with the hallmark on the back, your friends will know immediately you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is Lionel Barrymore. Thank you, Edward Arnold, for an outstanding performance as Jim Stebbins tonight. Thank you, Lionel. You know, it was a good story, as are all of your stories on Hallmark. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I want to thank you all tonight for reminding me of something. What's that, Eddie? Uh, That Christmas is getting closer and closer. Mm -hmm. Frank Goss was telling me about the dates we should mail our packages and cards overseas to guarantee Christmas delivery. That's right. That's right. Packages or cards sent regular mail must be sent right away. And the one sent air mail must be sent by December the 1st. Because we surely don't want to forget our fine men and women in the service or our friends in other countries. And you know, Eddie, there are whole more cards that say Merry Christmas in foreign language. <laughs> as well as special ones for the men and women in the armed services. Well, I didn't know that. Oh, sure. Uh-huh. Sounds like a great idea. No wonder Hallmark cards are so appreciated. There seems to be one for just about every occasion and person. Well, that's exactly right, Eddie. And now I want to tell you about our Thanksgiving show next week. It's called Standish of Standish and tells the exciting life story of that famous captain who led the pilgrims through their first struggles on this continent. And as our star, we are most happy to have John Hodiak. Hallmark Playhouse is every Sunday. Our producer, director is William Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by David Rose. And our story tonight was adapted by Leonard St. Clair. Until next Sunday, then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you carry enough to send the very best. Edward Arnold can be seen soon in the forthcoming picture, My Dad J.R., being produced by Hal Macklin. Every Sunday, Hallmark cards present two great programs for the whole family's enjoyment. On radio, the Hallmark Playhouse with host Lionel Barrymore. And on television, outstanding dramatic entertainment on the Hallmark Television Theater. Consult your paper for time and station. More student nurses are needed. If you're a young woman seeking an interesting profession, investigate nursing. It's a profession that offers opportunities in many fields. Next week at the same time, Hallmark Playhouse returns to present John Hodiak and Jane G. Austen's Standish of Standish, and the week after that, Bruce Lancaster's The Secret Road, starring Dana Andrews on the Hallmark Playhouse. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.